reporting on the games you love by people who love to game. The MMO Reporter Network. You're logging into your favorite game, grinding out some gear. A couple of points added to your stats, and you have a virtual beer. Max level is pretty cool, but I'll remind you here, my friend. These games are not about the goals, it's about the journey and not the end. You're listening to MMO Reporter, brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download at audibletrial.com slash MMO Reporter. And by Doghouse Systems. Choose your weapon with Doghouse Systems. Don't forget about your ults you need to cherish Each and every little character you've got No matter what level they're at Don't forget about your ults you need to cherish Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of MMO Reporter. This is episode 285. I'm Chris and I'm joined by the ever so antiquated Mr. At MMO Bill. Hello Bill. Well, you're old, too. <laughs> I am old. We're getting very old, Bill. Old. You're always going to be older. That's I just am. I am horribly older. Horribly older. It's a yep. it's a burden, but I think it's a burden that I bear well. I think I've, I've mm-hmm. learned to live with this burden and have done very well for myself. Yeah, the 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 ages of just the ages have just settled on your shoulders. At least that's what your... all the young fellers say. It's it's your burden to carry forever. Yeah, well, my yeah, youthfulness yeah. just flits about here and there and everywhere. Flows from your very pores. Yeah, oozes really. Yeah, it's kind of gross, but you know. Yeah. Well, we try not to mention something. Just we don't want you to be self conscious. Youthfulness is pretty gross. Yeah, it is, especially from from someone as aged as I am. All right. Mm-hmm. Um. Let's let's move on from this depressing topic and uh, into uh, what we have done in game because uh, we we've both got uh, some stuff on our on our lists here that, to talk about mm-hmm. about what we've been doing in game. So why don't you start, Bill? Okay, well, I am going to start because I got a new toy and I'm very happy with my new toy. My new toy is my Thrustmaster TWCS throttle that I've been thinking about and drooling over and asking for Christmas and not getting for Christmas and all that kind of good stuff for quite a while now. And I finally pulled the trigger after I found a good deal on Amazon. Uh, I actually, I did excellent. I ordered it from a, not Amazon itself, but from one of the Amazon vendors and it was in my hands less than two days later. Wow. That is pretty darn good. It's not, well, this is Amazon Canada too, and usually yeah. you don't get good stories <laughs> from Amazon in Canada, at least yeah. as far as shipping is concerned. So uh, this was a win, and I'm so far I'm really happy with it. I sat down. It took me probably about 40 minutes to figure out where I wanted to map all the functions on this thing. It's got quite a few, uh, uh, I want to say hat switches, but it's actually only got the one hat switch. It's got a uh, eight direction hat switch it's got a analog stick kind of like on an xbox controller uh that rides on your index finger yeah. uh several buttons several four direction buttons or a couple different four direction buttons uh, uh a left right flap on it and as well as the regular throttle control anyway you could look up the the TWCS. I'm not trying to do a commercial for Thrustmaster. They don't pay us <laughs> near enough for that. <laughs> but so far, so good. I'm enjoying it. And it pairs up nicely with my 16,000M uh, stick as well. That's awesome. So, because it, which is nice because they both use the target software. So, yeah. if I set up macros and I set up key bindings and that kind of thing in target for my flight stick, it's, I can actually combine it with uh, functions for my <laughs> throttle as well. Anyway, so that's, uh, and, that was fun. How has that been uh, as far as, you know, usability in, in Elite Dangerous? Or did you find the setup was good and, and all that? It's, it's going to take some getting used to. I can already tell it's going to be better, though, because yeah. I have better binding for all my thrusters now. Like, it used to be that I had I – had, 
that that uh, I had to have two hands on my flight stick in order to get uh, uh, up and down thrust as well as uh, left right, right thrust. And yeah. now I've got I've got that on. I've actually bound the thrusters to the eight direction hat switch, mm -hmm. so I can I can combine and do directional thrusting and everything like that in eight different directions. I feel like this we're talking about porn here, but this is actually flight <laughs> sims. So, um, yeah. So yeah, I've got that. I've got a few extra, uh, like I've bound a lot of the uh, thrust and boost mechanics uh, to the throttle. And I've also bound almost all of my um, lander, planetary lander oh, okay. controls to the throttle. I yeah. almost don't even need the flight stick. I can do almost all of it on the throttle now, Wow, which is better than using the Xbox controller. I, yeah. I found that. That was good. It's a good way. To, it's a good way to do it, but I find this just like four percent better. Four. Wow. So, That's yeah. so significant. I'm gonna, well, it's 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 a number. Uh, so I'm excited to get into Elite a little bit more. Uh, I I took it out for the test for a test drive. I did a I did a little bit of frame shift. I, I docked and undocked and docked again, and I didn't crash into anything, which was wow. uh, probably my biggest concern. But. <laughs> Yeah. So, but it's it's amazing. It's it, you add one new peripheral to Elite Dangerous, and it just feels a hundred percent different. Yeah, it's actually dangerous, just like the name, to mm -hmm. change your hardware a little bit. So, yes. so anyway, I'm enjoying enjoying that. Oh, uh, cool. I played uh, I played Project Gorgon. Well, we uh, as, we did, we, we did. did. Right? I did too. I, yeah. I did do my own uh, session there as well. That was interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not going to go too deep into that because Chris and I are going to do uh, a bit more of an in-depth uh, review of Project Gorgon and what we think and what our initial experiences were. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I mean, it's it's different. I don't hate it. It's not bad, but it is absolutely different. Uh, so I, I can't wait to it'll be it'll be good to talk about that a little bit more. Yeah, there was a lot of nostalgia playing it because uh in a lot of ways, it felt very Ashron's callish as we played it. I, I yeah, I was thinking that's. I the more I thought about that, the more I thought is because that was because Ashron's call was already in our minds because it Probably. was going away. But yes, it, it there there's a bit of a similar feel in there too. Yeah, but or I noticed it as well. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll see. Mm. Uh, it's. Uh, it, it's pretty cool. Uh, I did a little bit of uh, Guild Wars 2. Uh, my oh. wife and I were playing, and uh, we finished uh, the Season 3, Episode 1, Season okay. 4. Season 3 or Season, season 4? I can't three. remember how the seasons are. We're in Season, season three, 3 right yeah. now. So Season 3, Episode 1. So we got through that uh, Bloodstone Fen zone yeah. which uh was which was again very fun but i find that's a that's a weird a, a weird zone for ambience what do you mean it's, by that well the it i mean they did an excellent job of it. it 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 it's ambience represents what the zone is about excellently uh for those that you don't know basically this is a zone that has just experienced a catastrophic magical explosion right uh, uh basically what it's uh a bloodstone, which is a, an immensely powerful magical battery, essentially exploded and then simultaneously imploded at the same time, which sounds really weird. But once you start following the story a bit more, it starts to make a little bit more sense. Yeah. But this catastrophe essentially turns this zone into this ripped apart landscape of just complete and utter mess. So it used right. to be a jungle. Now it's this rocky uh explosion the air is filled with red dusty particulate uh there's floating islands all over the place like it just looks it it looks like a zone where a magical catastrophe has happened like mm -hmm. they did an excellent job for it but it's very it, it almost feels oppressive once you've been in it for quite a while yeah like you know how in lord of the rings uh you spend a little bit too much time in moria and you start to get a little bit depressed <sighs> or angry and yeah, it's, I mean, it's good. They did a great job imbuing the zone with that feeling, but it's almost a little bit too good because you, you emotionally, you actually start getting a little bit tired of being there because of the, that mm -hmm. depression and that ominous feeling of it. So 
um anyway that was that's it was a lot of fun it's it's a great zone but uh it's it's good to take a little vacation like head down to bloodstone fen for a little while mm-hmm. enjoy a little bit of seaside coastal stuff and, and then come back to the fen just to get your to make yourself yeah feel good yeah um and <laughs> then finally uh <clears throat> i so i had a bit of a moment uh, for those of you that were tuned in uh, to our Wednesday night stream for World of Warcraft, uh, I was bemoaning the fact that Chris had got his legendary item and I hadn't. I was really hoping that I was going to have two on my account before Chris even had one. And I was I was pleased for Chris. I was really happy he got his legendary, but I was just, there was a, that little part of me were that you? just desires schadenfreude <laughs> that was a little bit sad. That was just awful. Oh. This is unfortunate. And then there was another little part of me that was afraid, like, oh, my God, what if he gets two legendaries before (laughs) me? This would be the worst. Well, (sighs) ladies and gentlemen, let me assure you, that is not mathematically possible. Because I got my legendary on my priest. I got an amazing trinket that shoots immensely powerful fireballs, does 900,000 damage per fireball. Um, It's on a one-minute cooldown, so it's the kind of thing where... It's it's perfect for when you're in a world quest type situation and you're gathering up uh, five, six, seven mobs to all fight at the same time. So yeah. and as a shadow priest, basically, that's what I do. I'll dot up as much as I possibly can, drag them all into one space and then fireball them. And it's a super efficient way to kill a lot of things at once. Plus, fireballs are just cool. Just, just want to mention that the... Uh... The I because this happened right after I logged off. We stayed and we played a little bit after <laughs> after uh, the stream and and we're playing for a while. And I get this this I am from Bill that's all caps, no spaces, saying "Come back, come back, come back, come back, come back, come back, come back." <laughs> I got a legendary, <laughs> so I ran back to the computer and came back downstairs and. And I was I, quite, was I was yeah. pretty excited. Oh, I, 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 as, as in, in hindsight, I felt a little bit bad because I know you were heading to bed and were tired and everything. But uh, yeah, so I handed in. I actually got it. I got it from the exact same hand in that I got my first legendary from on my yeah. rogue, which was handing in the Kirin Tor huh. uh, world quest and getting it from the the bundle uh, from the Kirin Tor again. So I don't know if that's a thing. You have a history the then Kirin with the Kirin Tor. <laughs> well, I'm, I don't know if it's if the Curator are more likely if there's a slightly higher legendary drop or if this is just anecdotal evidence. Maybe uh, they just like you more. Probably. probably. Uh, I mean, me and the Curator, like uh, me and Cadgar, are kind of buds. Like Your we buds, go way back. Yeah. So yeah. we did do our uh, our Wednesday night stream as uh, as we usually do on funny enough Wednesday nights. Uh, we got a few mythics down, and we did our first mythic plus. Uh, at least for the two of us, everybody else in the group had done a mythic plus. Uh, but <laughs> yep. we used your key, right, for the mythic yep. plus? Yeah. Yep. And I'm actually still sitting on that upgraded key right now. I've been meaning to. Oh, it's gone get tonight, into... right? Isn't it Sunday nights? Uh, is it Sunday? Or I thought I think it actually had a six day timer oh. on it, so I think it's actually okay. good until at least Tuesday. Okay. But uh, yeah, I meant to do a looking for group for that to see if I could buy a carry because it's yeah. uh, it's the dungeon is Neltharian's lair, which if right. you're not a WoW person is going to mean absolutely nothing. But yeah. uh, for those of you know, apparently it's a pretty uh, desirable dungeon for people to want to do a right. quick mythic run through. So yeah. uh, Darren had suggested that uh, uh, I just jump into LFG for that. Say, hey, I've got this key, carry me. Yeah. And people would actually want to do that. So, yeah. Well, so, it's it was it was fun to run through. Um, mm-hmm. We did two that night, um, and uh, and we just overall had a pretty great time. If you want to check out that Wednesday night wild stream, it's uh, funny enough on Wednesday nights at um, eight p.m. Pacific, and it's over at the MGN uh, channel on youtube mm-hmm. youtube.com slash mgn slash live and i'll usually tweet yeah. out and put out on facebook and stuff like that when we're yeah. going live we'll there. put we'll put a link to that in the show notes as well too when we're done mm-hmm. um and so uh yeah that's sort of our wow time which is mm-hmm. it's funny that that we stuck around with it so long especially with the amount of expansions where we've had the running joke on the show that it is like the most dreadful thing that you have to share when you re-upped on <laughs> wow um yeah and an apology is needed for the rest of the hosts, right? 
I was actually having this conversation at work the other day. Uh, nobody knows anyone who ever resubscribes to World of Warcraft and is excited about it. <laughs> it's always, oh, yeah, I resubscribed. Yeah. yeah, I re-upped. You know what? Nobody ever says, yay, I have a subscription again. I can't wait to play. When is the last time you paid a subscription for WoW, Bill? Uh, oh, it would have been in Draenor time. Uh, so 2014. Well, no, because you paid for your first month back in Legion, right? Uh, well, that wasn't subscription though. I did. I bought the time card for that. Oh, okay. So, but okay. So when's the last time you paid for your WoW time, like in oh, real world in money? Legion, uh, back in September. Like so, September. So or you August, did, August, August, and it was it a one month or two month? I'm just trying to show to two. our listeners here. Two months. Okay. So August yeah. and September were covered, and then so October, November, December, January, and February, and you're back mm -hmm. in March. Your subscription and goes April. till right. And April. And April. So yep. you are you are now seven months where you, WoW has essentially been a free to play game for you. Yeah, and you know what? I'm and anyone who's watched our Wednesday night stream knows that I'm not an expert. Like I don't, I'm not, I'm not like a gold making wizard or anything like that. Right. And WoW, basically, I run around, I pick flowers when I see them, I mine nodes when I see them, and I sell them on the auction house when I'm done. Yeah, and that's enough. Like I'm not rich. Like I don't ever get. Like I'm not getting into the hundreds of thousands or millions of gold like some people get. Uh, right. But I make enough to keep my subscription going. Yeah. So it's, I. And that's what I kind of said from the beginning is I'll play as long as I can cover my subscription with uh, in-game gold. When I got this token, I think I think you were online too. I had 200 gold left or something from 56,000, I think it was, when I bought it at that time. So, yeah, we're enjoying our time back in WoW. I wish I could say as much for Rift. I'm loving every minute that I'm playing. I'm at a point now. I have run through the next zone I'm supposed to go to, and there's not a single quest for me to pick up. I've gone back to the main town, no quests. I don't know what I'm supposed to do right now. There's no breadcrumb leading me back anywhere. And so I'm just grinding out. They've got these carnage quests where you get extra XP from uh, killing uh, groups of mobs. You kill one mob, it says, oh, kill nine more, and we'll give you some extra XP and stuff. And so that's what I'm doing right now in the second to last zone in the expansion, and it's like... So <sighs> is there no option to just bounce around for with the rifts and other instabilities I and that kind of thing? I can't do rifts without more people. And there's not enough people in the areas that I'm at to do the rifts. Uh, I can't clear a foothold. I can't clear a rift. I can't even clear a foothold going back to old zones in this expansion. I'm not strong enough yet. I'm not powerful enough. I don't know if it's gear. Although I have noticed that... Uh, it's much more uh, gear is much bigger helper than extra levels right now. Uh, when okay. I have gone back to an area when I'm in the same level and have uh, fought the same mobs again, I had better gear and it was easier. I hadn't leveled yet. So would it is the advantage maybe then to queue up for dungeons, try I to don't get your know gear what I need up? To do. And... Yeah, maybe that's what I need to. But seriously, like. I, I, I guess I am, and I hate to make a comparison like this, but I guess I am, I don't know what the right word used to or accustomed to the, 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 the bounty of stuff that you can do to level in WoW, right? Mm -hmm. there's, there's an abundance, an overabundance, you could almost say, of quests to do to level, right? Yeah, and I know... I know you're trying to make it sound like a fair and nice thing, but that is a major ball drop for yeah. an MMO that's not a true, so, um, what, do we, what do you want to call it? It's not a true sandbox right. where yeah, totally. you're this supposed is a theme to just park. go and make yeah, your own yeah. fun. This is theme park. You're supposed to be on rails. And if you get yeah. to an area and you just don't even know what to do next, yeah. that's kind of a design flaw. I haven't and even found a quest hub in the whole zone. Mm -hmm. at all yeah so no for sure it's it's yeah. it's a miss and i know we've 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 uh theorized about this in the past that maybe it's a uh subscription thing that the experience comes smoother the quiz quests unlock more yeah. smoothly if you're subscribed and you get the associated experience bonus with that that's pretty dirty if I do say so myself, like yeah. it, there should at least but, be something to say, oh, you know, you'd be the right, you'd be this level right now if you'd have 
subscribed right. or here you can get this experience boost if you dump a thousand gold yeah. here or yeah. like have some kind of method to get you there uh or at least be told but even how, if that was the like, case even if that was the case i would be at max level right now still having two zones to go through and not knowing what to do in them i, like I have I, you i need to have I, you I need to make a bigger uh, effort to go back and look through different parts of the game to see if I can find stuff. I haven't done any dungeons yet. I was going to wait till max level and yeah. and go through them. But uh, it, yeah. have you found any leveling guides or anything that might give hints? No, I'll, I'll go back and, and do that. I want to try and do it on my own, especially when I'm doing a review, because it's it's hard to go through the content and look at guides or anything like that without being yeah. influenced by the author's uh, bias on that yeah, particular great. game. So. Fair enough, but I mean, if I mean to me, that's kind of the bias already. That if you can't, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. if you if you can't figure out where to go next, and yeah. you have to Google it, then mm -hmm. geez, that's that's a point that needs to be mentioned in the review for sure. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, really cool nostalgic thing, especially with uh, with uh, Gump's Gang being in the chat room, who uh, every week mentions that he's been playing. Uh, playing ddo which reminds me at uh, chat room if you uh, want to let us know what you have been playing for the past week uh what games you have been in we'll mention that at the end of this segment uh but my whole family was in ddo this past weekend we spent most of saturday myself uh selenia and our sons uh playing ddo my daughter tried it didn't like it uh, so I'll talk about that in a second but uh, we ran mm -hmm. through all of the new starter area which you wouldn't recognize bill totally new storyline oh, really? yeah totally new you start on this other little island thing and then you get to Stormreach. whereas you were in a like the slums of Stormreach to begin with when we started the game yeah and um so we did that all day which was a lot of fun we uh Selenia and i had had done our two characters through all that stuff on our own but we couldn't go back because it was the tutorial area so we created new characters and ran th the boys through all that and uh, then we got to Stormreach, moved to our main characters, and did a couple dungeons there, which was uh, very nostalgic, very fun. Nice to have that linearity of the dungeons as your goal as you go in. There's not a ton of pop-ups all over the screen and all that sort of stuff. It's just a nice, straightforward dungeon experience. Mm -hmm. So that was a lot of fun. Jumped in Lotro just a little bit. Um and uh and spent some time in there but the what i want to talk about on a saturday night because my daughter didn't like excuse me <clears throat> ddo uh we jumped into wildstar with her uh so uh Seleni and i uh, were back in wildstar and that was the one with uh Selenia's small laptop screen all these pop-ups popping up at her and the mm -hmm. the more open-endedness of some of the areas uh was really a big contrast to ddo uh but holy how it looks good on my new computer like wow <laughs> oh my gosh um yeah, it's funny how wow. the game that's five years newer look is designed to be played on bigger heavier grander hardware yeah but uh look at uh lotro uh, and we'll talk about this a little bit later in the show yeah. um it is a beautiful game. DDO has some some similar elements to that as well. The grandiose nature of it and stuff like that that is doing very well on my very big curved ultra widescreen monitor, right? Like it's it's looking mm -hmm. nice. But mm -hmm. Wildstar just looks nice. <laughs> you know if you got the difference there. But... Yeah, I, I, I think you just a little bit too lusty. Thank you. I pictured you standing in a dirty old <laughs> van offering free candy to Wildstar on the side of the road. <laughs> oh, I was a little bit uncomfortable, I have to say. Speaking of of lustily looking after games, I don't know what where I'm going there, but uh, I actually because I watched a couple of videos on YouTube, and I jumped into Black Desert Online, and you want to talk about beautiful games like. I don't know if you can have a chance, Bill, to go over to and watch the, the video on the, the chat room, but like, wow, that game is pretty. And I played a character that was like a a uh, like a samurai almost, like a one sword and then a bow for some attacks. And it wasn't I had to switch back and forth. I just had some of my attacks were swords. Some of my attacks were, were bow. Mm -hmm. um, it was just really, really fun 
and I really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm trying to get up to a part here where people can see mm -hmm. me fighting uh, because it's the fighting that uh, that is really cool. It, here we go. It does look... It's a pretty-looking game. Oh, so and, nice. again, my bias all comes down to the marketing screenshots and all that kind of stuff and everything like yeah. that. And I, I, I don't want to, I've, I've ranted that rant too many times, so I'm going to leave it for today. We'll save it yeah. for next show. So, yeah. but it's, I don't know. Chat room back on Wildstar, by the way, says space hamsters, hamsters in 4k. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love Ooh, Chua, we, but anyways, we're going to, it's going to go from eventually I noticed, uh, it from space hamsters in 4k to, uh, uh, undead reborn hamsters in 4k once uh once you start streaming some crowfall eh? yeah With the Ganeshan being out there anyways uh back to black desert online i've always said this is a wonderful game i i, I think i've recommended it many times on the show i the reason i went back here and i hope i can find enough time to do this is there was a video of you know a return to black desert online so i just clicked it while i was playing something else or doing something else and uh, they talked about their casual playthrough and how you don't have to do all the complex stuff. You can just play through the content of the game. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm not going to do any of the, the trade skills. I'm not going to do any of the trading. I'm going to be a, a poor samurai on the road uh, doing quests and, and dungeons and stuff like that and, and see how it goes. The fluidity of this game is really what gets me. It's the animations. I mean, the, the, it's, it's pretty for one thing. Uh, like the amount of blades of grass that are on the ground is amazing, but it's mm -hmm. so fluid. The animations are exceptional. So, um, yeah, I'm uh, I'm kind of excited about getting back into that. I hope I find enough time. But it's it's another. It's like it's going to be another Neverwinter or Star Trek Online where I just it's I want to play it more, but I just never have the time. So, see, I need a new computer. I feel are you like looking at I it? need. Are you looking at it? I, it oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think I can see just looking at it. My computer would play it. It would struggle. Yeah. And and again, this is getting down into the Schadenfreude thing. I think I need to come up with some kind of uh, something that's going to get me a computer that's four percent better than yours. <laughs> because a, I want to have a, a new computer, but. B, I just want it to be 4% better than 4%, yours. 4%, yeah. But then I'll have to yeah, buy another that's... 1080 to put in here, and then it won't be 10 per, 4% better. Ah, but this is a game we could play together. <laughs> that it is. That it is. It's the never-ending game. It's uh, I don't know who's the hero and who's the villain here, but it's yeah. this back and forth forever. All right, so uh, our chat room, Gump's Gang, has been playing uh, DDO and um, Final Fantasy XIV, as always, and jumped into, after all our discussion, uh, jumped into SWOTOR. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, uh, and is just mentioning now that maybe, uh, maybe Black Desert will be added to the list. I yeah. hovered over uh, Star Wars actually for several minutes actually today even because i was trying to patch uh, project gorgon it needed a big patch today which i thought was weird the patch seemed to be bigger than the initial install of the game huh. but uh yeah and star wars is very much the single player mmo it's the game mm -hmm. to play when you don't have anyone to play with yeah yeah I, I really, now that I think Rift is going to go on that back burner, I think Swotor is going to come back up and be on the front burner again because I've got to get through those expan the expansion uh, content mm -hmm. and i got to get into that So because it looks so freaking cool and I was enjoying the story and then my stupid computer died, but now I have my computer that I have now and I'm okay with that. Kind of it okay. just gave you a hug, didn't it? Yeah. Oh, cool thing. By the way, uh, my computer's lights uh, will sync up to Wildstar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. uh -oh. yep they will i know I you're all thinking can't... i wish that was me i know you no are. i was just thinking as uh, how could i care even less there's i mean i'm jealous of a lot of things about your computer the fact that it lights up doesn't do it for me yeah 
Yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, Gums Gang, we already talked about. Uh, Patreon. Go uh, check out our Patreon page, patreon.com slash MMO Reporter. Thanks to, I think we've got three new patrons in the last little while. So, we'll be mentioning those after the first of the month. But thank you to everyone who's uh, who's gone and checked that out. And I have been spending some time getting our Discord server all set up over there. Um, if you want to... Uh, uh, to join that, I'll, I'll throw a link out. But uh, our patrons get a special patron-only d- uh, channel in there. So that's uh, that's fun to have over there. So thank you to everyone who is supporting the network. Patreon.com slash MMO Reporter. We really appreciate it. Uh, and we hope that uh, more of you help us keep the lights on here at MMO Reporter. So we've got some interesting news coming out of the Elder Scrolls Online. There was a cryptic video posted on Twitter, and I'm just going to bring that up for our live chat room here. And and, and for those of you that's, who are... Oh, go ahead. Cryptic. That's cryptic confusing, not cryptic Star Trek Online. Yes. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, a cryptic... Uh, it, was, it, was, it was very teasy. Um, it is a, a, a an announcement about their Twitch stream on Tuesday over a bed of of lava is what I'm guessing with a very fire sort of sound. So let me just uh, move things over here so everybody can see. But then I'll be very quiet and you can hear when I when it there. You hear that? It's like a volcano. Ooh. Spooky. Um, so <laughs> there is a lot of discussion. Bill, did you play Morrowind, by the way? Oh, yeah. 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 So do you remember uh, Vardenfell? If I'm saying that right? Red Mountain? Oh, very Volcanoes? Vaguely. Volcanoes? Very vaguely. You have to appreciate that was a long time ago. But... Well, for those of you who are curious, by the way, I have uh, in the... Uh, in the show notes, I have a link to the uh, the Vardenfell uh, wiki page for those of you who are Elder Scrolls fans, and um, it's uh, it describes the zone and stuff like that. It's basically the foot of the Red Mountain, which is a big volcano. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's tons of discussion on Reddit as to what this might be. A ton of excitement, and uh, I, I I'm. I'm excited about this too, not because I'm an active player in Elder Scrolls Online, but because it had such a rough start. Both Harry and I said some very uh, less than positive things or alternative facts to the fact that it's an amazing game at launch. Hmm. We'll start the alternative facts, hashtag alternative facts here. Uh, mm, no, we neither of us really liked it. Neither of us enjoyed it. Um, Harry uh, was was quite critical of it, and I was was a little bit less, but still, I didn't make it very far in the game before I just got bored. The one Tamriel update has reinvigorated the game, I think, to the level that Final Fantasy XIV's relaunch did. It is now a very, very vibrant community. Overall, a a mostly positive community. And they're really excited about this new content. And the fact that there's been so much content coming out for the game is a really, really good thing. And I'm really, really... Uh, optimistic for Elder Scrolls Online and what Zenimax is, is going to do with that IP and, and with the game. Bill, is this uh, is this Morrowind memory going to get you back into Elder Scrolls Online or into Elder Scrolls Online for the first time? Uh, well, it's not Food and Beef for the first time. I have I do have Elder Scrolls Online and have played and all that kind of good stuff. Um, any tweak to Elder Scrolls Online is going to get me interested to a degree. Um, This doesn't knock it up to my number one game at the moment. So I don't know. I I, I feel like I need to give Elder Scrolls Online a better effort than I did initially, but it's not going to be this Did you get into it? I don't think. Did you play it? Oh, yeah. Okay. I I mean, played it. We're talking like starting zone 
type okay. stuff or yeah. like one zone past the yeah. starting zone or something like that. Uh, so it was, like I said, it, it wasn't a good enough effort. I'd like to give it a better effort, but, um, huh, but nothing, maybe how's that for a, Ooh. uh, yeah. definitive, uh, ratings grabbing answer. Yeah. Um, so we do have someone who's who's hopefully going to be getting some stuff together for us about Elder Scrolls Online, and, and we will hopefully get them on the show uh, who's been playing in there. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm really optimistic. If you haven't tried Elder Scrolls yet, there's some pretty great sales. I, I'm looking at the, the subreddit right now, and actually at the top of the subreddit, they have links to buy the game. And on, I don't know the site, so I haven't seen it before, so I can't talk to its validity, but DL Gamer, have you ever heard of DL Gamer before? They've got one Tamriel on for 14 bucks. I mean, that's a steal for that game, for the amount of content you're going to get. Uh, and the gold um, edition of the game, which is all but one of the DLC, uh, they've got uh, at Green Man Gaming, which I do know, uh, they've got for 39 bucks, 39.99. So, uh that's a pretty good deal for the amount of content you get there. If you're looking for a really content rich game that you're going to be able to soak into, that's got a, a pretty vibrant game world. I think this is where you want to go right now. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so uh, go check that out. We'll have all the links in the show note, Bill, uh, before I get lost uh, in, in uh, on the world of elder scrolls online, uh, do you have any news that might be out of this world? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And once you once you're done dinking around on just one tiny little planet, you can ex explore the entire galaxy Ooh. in Elite Dangerous uh, with friends starting with patch 2.3 <gasps> really? in late February or coming into beta in late February. Pardon me. So 2.3, uh, we've been hearing bits and pieces about it for quite a while. It's big features or the ones that are are that we've been really talking about for a long time are that it's going to be introducing multi-crew mm -hmm. so being able to have a co-pilot a gunner an engineer etc cetera, etc cetera, on your ship helping you pilot uh as well as having as starting to have uh, avatar creation so your your pilot won't be this faceless blob that's just a hand or a pair of hands uh on the hotas equipment uh you'll Hot actually yeah, yes <laughs> uh, well done <laughs> sorry you'll actually sorry. be able to create an avatar which a lot of people are seeing as a precursor to being able to run around and do things mm -hmm. on your feet like it's interesting that it's the interaction in elite is getting is going from big to small starting in your gigantic spaceship and then dropping down into yeah. a lander or a a launched uh, mini fighter and then finally we're going to be graduating to just a dude in a spacesuit running around okay so here's the question bill are you going to be the pilot or are you going to be the gunner i depends i don't know See, I, it, dep it really depends on the ship that I have. I mean, if I ever get to the Anaconda that I've always dreamed of, no one else is flying that. That's hmm. like the equivalent of me having a Ferrari and somebody else asking to drive. No. The answer is no. <laughs> so I'll be Thank the Thank you for not asking. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. If I make you the gunner, what if you scratch the paint on my ship? <laughs> I'm yeah. thinking engineer. Uh, the engineer is the person that's going to be in charge of power distribution, repairs. So when you do scratch my ship, you can actually fix it. I, I think that's that's where you should be. Either that, things. or if if you really impress me with your skills, I'll mm -hmm. put you up to tactical, so you can run my shields for me, and that way you can keep my ship from getting scratched, which would make me happy. I can't. I can't be fire slash weapons. Yeah, I'll get an NPC to do that. Chat room's saying I should be communications officer. Ooh, there you go yeah yeah tactical um anyway yeah so those uh, so yeah the roles that they expect are going to be in the, available to you. you're going to be able to uh, uh, have a crew limit of up to four so you're going to be able to get four friends no npcs to start with uh they i they expect to add npc crew members down the road but uh, for now, it's just real humans that are helping you fly your ship. Uh, the roles are going to be a uh, hel helmsperson, uh, the tactical, uh, tactical for like I mentioned, for shields, countermeasures, right. engineer, power distribution, repairs, uh, basically Scotty, um, and uh, and your and your 
weapons person. So are or, are we going to be pirates shooting. or are we going to be good people? Well, I don't know. I, I do everything. <laughs> I don't. I've never been a pirate in. Okay, that's it. Elite Dangerous. The SS. Not on purpose. The anyway. SS Reporter, the greatest pirate ship in all the Ooh. spaceways. Arr. That's the other piece that they're actually that they the rumor is that's going to be added. This is not a confirmed thing. This is a rumor that you're, they're going to add the ability to name your ship. Oh, so your, your, your commander is you. You have your commander name and your commander chris or right. whatever you want to be uh but you can name your ship the uh the suzy q or the or the ss mmo reporter or whatever uh yeah 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 okay so here's the problem that i see with this mm-hmm. i already feel that elite dangerous is something that i either need to give my life to or run away screaming from this does <laughs> not make me feel that any less i want to well, sleep inside of elite dangerous i really do well, it does seem cool but the the interesting thing is i'm wondering if this is going to open the door to casual play a little bit more too because i, I don't know how coordinating with your cult pilots is going to work like it, what would be glorious is if you're a commander and another commander could just quote unquote summon you to be yes. the gunner for your game session that okay. kind of thing so you don't I'm have in. to spend an hour and a half crossing the galaxy to get to the same space station as the person with the anaconda yes. and fly around like that if that's the way it works yay unfortunately there's a very vocal part of the uh elite dangerous community that seems hell-bent on making the game as difficult as possible with pointless time sinks, uh, all for the sake of realism and uh, challenge. So somehow, Ooh. like the like the 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 bell cow for this uh, for this problem, at least in my mind, was when they were talking about uh, ship storage or si- ship summoning. Mm-hmm. So you're docked at a, at a station and you're in your Cobra and you realize, oh, you know what? I need to do some trading here. I need my, my T6 that's parked over in Space Station Y. It used to be that you would have to get in your ship and fly back to Space Station Y, change ships, and then start carrying on. And then if you ever wanted to go back to your Cobra, you had to go back to that station, switch ships, and everything like that. Well, they added the feature to allow you to summon your ship to wherever you are, which is great. But this part of the community decided to make a big raising, big stink and stink about the whole thing to say, yeah, you know what? There better be a time sink in this. You better be a delivery time or something like that. So now, depending on where you are, it can take a few hours to almost a day to summon your ship to where you want it. Hmm. Which just is... It, just, it that was one of the most infuriating things in the world to me. Now, Stupid to be fair, this was a, this was a big for. debate in the forums. But uh, it was, I, I really agreed with the people that said, come on, I just want to play the game. Mm-hmm. Waiting, waiting for something to happen is not playing right. the game. That's, right. I, I get the whole realism immersion and everything like that. But at some point, there, there's no fun to be had sitting around with their finger up your nose waiting for your ship to arrive hours later. You, sir, are correct. I am. You are. You've never been more right, Bill. And the emails will roll in this week to tell me exactly how wrong I actually am. And I'm sure (laughs) that's fine. Uh, All right. Uh, We're going to move on. We're going to talk real quickly about our two sponsors, Audible. Go to audiblepodcast.com slash MMO Reporter to check out the web's best audiobook service. I've been, uh, I was an Audible subscriber for a very long time while I had a long commute and they were absolutely fantastic. I love my audiobooks. Uh, it was some great narrators, some great stories, and a great way to experience all that content without having to sit and read. That drive was made very, very much shorter by those books. So check out audiblepodcast.com slash MMO reporter. And, and stop reading while you drive. That's true. Uh, and <laughs> Doghouse Systems. Go to doghousesystems.com. Use the coupon code MMO reporter when you buy the the world's best boutique computer. And uh, they will add a free SSD to your purchase. So just go to doghousesystems.com slash MMO. Or no, doghousesystems.com and use the coupon code MMO Report. Pull that world boss out of party. 
run through trash You'll be sorry Take a bio break without announcing They may not rhyme But they're quite possibly the Dumbest ways to die Dumbest ways to die Dumbest ways to die So many come all right, we have got some news coming out of Standing Stone Games. It is a little bit weird not calling it Turbine, I have to say. It's a little bit weird. Yeah. Uh, but uh, some news coming out of Standing Stone Games talking about Lotro's plans for 2017. Now, as always, and we have mentioned this before, with all of these producers' letters, they're light on details and they're meant for the community at large, not necessarily those of us who follow these games very, very closely. So I did think that overall this was a fairly detail-heavy, as far as producers' letters go, uh, producers' letter, um, and there were three big parts to it uh, and a teaser. First was that uh, the, there's going to be a new event coming as the centerpiece to the 10th anniversary celebrations this spring, which is very exciting. Ten years Lotro has been out there. I remember playing in the beta, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's ten years, so we're going to be celebrating that this spring. Update 20 is our pre-expansion release, and this is going to have uh, a few different areas. Uh, well, the one big area called the Wastes, which is uh, going to have some bleak no man lands, uh, Dagger Lad, and the Slag Hills of Mordor. Um, and and uh, could there be something else, Bill? Oh well, this was just my my dreaming like with uh shadow of mordor being such a success and everything mm -hmm. like that wouldn't it be great if there was a little talion easter egg somewhere in the hills of mordor or in the badlands just outside of mordor absolutely i need to play and i don't know again. if this is an update 20 or an update 21 kind of thing yeah because I, I i believe that the shadow of mordor truth be told was actually i mean it was obviously a prequel to uh, the the Lord of the Rings trilo trilogy mm -hmm. and that kind of thing, uh, but I couldn't tell if the land was the area just outside of Mordor, outside the Black Gate, or if it was Mordor itself before it became more thoroughly corrupted. Yeah, but in any case, uh, yes, if there's a Talion NPC, if they if uh, yeah, Standing Stone and Turbide could work out the the happiness with that, then that would just be. Uh, mm -hmm. delicious fan service yep uh, it might be a little too much outside of the books but but you know what I, you I, I don't okay need to it. you don't need to make it a specific thing you make it uh a uh, 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 something that maybe you misspell it or it's significant mm -hmm. to people who have played shadows of mordor and not immersion breaking for those who haven't Yep. Right. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have the and Battle of the... Bla oh, sorry. I was moving I was, along. But... I was going to say, too, like it's... It, and not to mention, they're going to have to start getting used to going outside of the scope of the books at some point because we're, as, we're running out of pages here. As Severlin says, there are several hundred pages after the ring is destroyed in The Return of the King. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of pages. Yes, you're absolutely correct. Not all of them are the most exciting or lend themselves <laughs> to uh, a, a video game but but you know what standing stone has and that dev team has uh, been known to tease out content out of the smallest of yeah. bits of the book so yeah and i i believe they'll do it like i'm not saying that they'll mess it up i actually have a lot of faith that they'll do a good job with this i just yeah i it would be a nice it would be mm -hmm. a nice nod, yeah. Because that's been that was one of the, geez, probably one of my favorite single player games that I've played in a couple of years, easy. Mm -hmm. If not my absolute favorite. Yeah, it was definitely one of my favorite as well. Uh, okay, Battle of the Black Gate is also going to be a part of this. Uh, it didn't say exactly what that was going to look like, but that's exciting. Two mm -hmm. capstone resource dungeons that you can do in solo or fellowship. And very and the, the the line that I liked was various companies within the host of the West 
Um, is this the factions that they were talking about in the interview I did uh, a while back? They I didn't put any of the Lotro or DDO content in the MMO Reporter episode. Um, I just put sort of the Standing Stone Games part of it. But in Lotro Reporter part, uh, they did mention that there were going to be f- different factions that players could join uh, as, as we go into the Mordor expansion. So maybe this is what they're talking about. And uh, different players joining different factions could add to some diversity in the game. And especially uh, some diversity in playthroughs if you have different characters. Mm-hmm. Which in a 10-year-old game, uh, yeah, everybody probably has a couple of alts at, cap, at max level. Mm. Uh, and then update 21, this is going to be the expansion. As they say, we are going to <clears throat> shatter the gate. <clears throat> I didn't say it right. <laughs> shatter the black <laughs> gates and march into Mordor. How was that? That... Like, mm-hmm. honestly we'll give it a four i think there was some too much too much technical difficulty there yeah 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 uh there's gonna be multiple regions but they did mention in our interview that that will be four new monsters new mechanics uh hopefully better than mounted combat and new treasures sorry i had a, a little bit of a something in my throat there that came out mm-hmm. a little bit and we haven't talked about this yet the new high elf race um i have to admit i think think that this is incredibly stupid and i don't want to sugarcoat it because i really do think like a new race i understood bjorning because of the difference but the new high elf race is just a different type type of elf why didn't they have you know like the iron iron hill or iron mountain uh dwarves and then the uh airbor dwarves right like that's basically well, what it is so they, how are they, they going to distinguish it they are different in the universe. Like the difference between the right. high elves and the wood elves were significant. The differences were significant. And I that's mean, power in the same... level, right? Like power level, yeah. Evan, they were incredibly magical. In were... the same way that men from the north were different from men and from the south right. and that kind of thing. So I, I could see that there is is going to be a difference there. So I'm sort of okay with it. I my concern is and I this would be yeah, my concern is that they're creating a new race without having to create new models or animations. Like it it that it, it smacks of a little bit of uh I don't want to call it laziness cuz I don't think it's actually laziness, but it's it it's trying to squeeze a little bit too much out of that. And I don't know that we necessarily need I, the high elves i feel yeah, like there's exactly. i don't That's even know that point. we necessarily need new races because yeah. there's not a, it's not like i mean it's not like uh other mmos where uh everything is a giant melting pot of a ton of ra- uh, races or anything like that like the source material for lord of the rings has a very very small number of races mm-hmm. and it seems to be that you could probably do better adding other things like i'd almost say that they're probably due for a new class rather than a new race Mm -hmm. like i know the bjorning is kind of a it's a class of its own and everything like that but i feel like that's the direction that they should go in because there's absolutely a million classes that you can do like uh, there's the the characters and the ability types and and that kind of thing that are already in your source material you could absolutely uh extend that further Mm-hmm. but uh i mean there's there's always i mean really they haven't even gone down the, the obvious uh route of having a ranger yeah well so, the hunters are very much they're mechanically ranger-ish. like the rangers are in in the books right like what would you see differently that a ranger would do that a hunter can't see i always thought that the ranger was a bit more of a uh like it was almost more of it was it's almost like if you took the burglar and the hunter and mashed them together and then made it a little bit more martial like a little captainish I mean. in there like yeah. another like class I... that could start conjunction or sorry fellowship maneuvers um yeah. and yeah okay yeah I... but I, I, I don't know. I mean, this is just spitballing and I, I, I hate, I, I don't really necessarily like the notion of creating a new class by just mashing three other classes together. Mm-hmm. There's probably some creativity to be had there, but I mean, Hey, I was, I, I was, we're working here. It, it took me a minute to come up with that. Yeah. 
Okay, so yeah, we're both skeptical, I think, about the high elf race. You're a little bit less skeptical than I am. Uh, aesthetic improvements to all the races. I know this was a discussion, uh, so they're looking at anima uh, animations and, uh, mm -hmm. and, and textures as well. And then update 22, post-expansion, still this year, hopefully. No ideas. That's the tease. There will still mm -hmm. there'll be another update this year after the expansion. This is a lot of content uh, from, well, it's... from Lotro. For it's this year. I, it's good that they're they're planning so deep into the future, and I think that's the thing that always makes people nervous about Lord of the Rings Online, is it's always felt like a game that was kind of on the edge, and you had to wonder, okay, where's the line? Like, do they just stop doing things when we get to Mordor, when we get to that stage in the story? It, it, it's it's nice, to, like these these uh, these. Uh, producer letters that we've got from them in the past have always been kind of at least to me a kind of a calming influence like yes we have yeah. a plan things are happening don't worry yeah so because and because lord of the rings online also has fallen into uh content drought oh risks yes Absolutely. before or problems we've had in the a, past so we've had a full like uh expansion launching in august september and nothing in the year before other than events like well, in, they've in already said calendar that year. coming coming into update 21 is going to be their first expansion in nearly four years. Right. But what so. I'm saying is that the, they've been doing these updates, though, uh, for the last little mm -hmm. while more regularly. I think when we were doing Lotro Reporter, there was a good chunk when they went from January to September with no update. Yep. Right. Yep. So, yeah. OK, uh, let's move on to the next story. Bill, do you want to take this one? Uh, yeah, this, so this is just a bit of good news for all those people out there that have tried to get PAX passes in the past and couldn't quite get them. So there is a new PAX being announced. Uh, it's being called uh, PAX Unplugged, which is going to happen at the uh, Pennsylvania Convention Center in Philadelphia, November 17th to 19th of this year. And it's focused uh, heavily on tabletop gaming. So this is really going into the roots of I, like this. I feel like this is them kind of harkening back to what PAX originally was. Because when I talk to the people like the real PAX old timers that were there back in the in the good old days before they would sell out in two minutes after of of having passes on sale and and completely taking over all of downtown Seattle while they for the for that one weekend every year that when it was a lot more of an intimate thing the best memories that people always told me about were going around experimenting with the new tabletop games meeting random people and playing a random game here there and everywhere and that's like that's the memories that that people would always tell me about saying this is what i really love to do with with pax so i feel like they're taking this this whole kind of member berry uh fad going on here and really diving into what the actual nostalgia of pax is and trying to condense a new pax into just that so right. i desperately hope this works out like that that this is a PAX with a unique identity that really dives in and really kind of answers that call for the people that don't necessarily want to stomp around on the show floor or don't want to go to a million uh, uh, seminars or anything like that. They just want to go and play games. And yeah. this would be a glorious answer mm -hmm. to that. I would Absolutely. love for it to take off. And uh, this is a really good fit for PAX as a whole as well. Um, PAX mm -hmm. East and PAX Prime, which are sort of the two... Uh, bookends, if you will, of of the PAX experience are both very similar shows. They're mm -hmm. uh, they're conventions with a lot of booths, with a lot of announcements, and people get to try games, demos, hardware, all that sort of stuff. They're very very similar. Uh, PAX Oz is a an international version of the same thing, right? Uh, with a little bit of a different flavor because it's in Australia. I assume I haven't been um, there yet. PAX South uh, is uh, is uh, just going on actually this past weekend. Uh, PAX South happened. Um, it, mm -hmm. It's a little bit smaller. It definitely has its own identity. Um, and there doesn't tend to be as much news that comes out of there. It def definitely harkens back to that community nature of uh, uh, PAX before it blew up to what it is. So this new one in November, uh, kind of the tail end of the year here, is uh, it was a really good fit for all of you who love board games. Now, it is mm -hmm. um, at the same weekend as another... <laughs> um as another uh board game convention in somewhere 
Uh, and uh, I'm trying to look up what that is. Um, oh, oh. I thought you were going to tell me it's the same weekend as BlizzCon this year. No. No. Um, that's pretty close. BlizzCon is usually about... I think BlizzCon's usually a week or two earlier, isn't it? I don't remember to be to be off the, off the top of my head um uh i uh, i i i don't remember at all sorry i'm i'm trying to multitask i'm horrible at this um <laughs> multitasking is not my thing um and uh it's just not working well let's see here uh where is it here uh bgg that's what it is uh oh, okay. bgg is a big uh, board game convention uh and so it's the same weekend and so that was that's unfortunate interesting like i wonder if that's planned like they want to go head to head with another Mm-mm. convention like maybe so. this is the, i i feel like it couldn't be otherwise like i i've got a lot more faith in penny arcade well, to to be able to look at the schedule and say oops we're colliding with another convention doing almost exactly the same thing like I, I almost wonder, like, are do they? Is there something about BGG that maybe Pax is trying to say? Okay, they're doing this, and we don't like it, so we're doing the opposite. Could be. My two thoughts on that, though, are are it's it's too hard to book venue space for the amount of people that a Pax will get, even a Pax unplugged, uh, which is a completely different uh, experience. So it, it will probably have a different number. Uh, BGG, I believe, is about three thousand for the weekend and i would guess packs unplugged would probably be 30,000. I mean a regular packs is like 70,000 if you just take the board game component of it, blow it up a little bit. Uh 30,000 is not an unreasonable number for a packs. So yeah, i think uh finding a space that that has can hold 30,000 people for a weekend, i don't think that you have as much flexibility to book against another convention. That's just my thoughts. I'll- I wonder if it's going to be that big. I, I think that's probably one of the things that would do well. It would do well with is if it was a bit more intimate. I think 30,000 compared to 70,000 is a bit more intimate. Yes, but <laughs> just because it's more intimate doesn't make it actually intimate. Very true. Very true. Okay. There's, so if you're interested, uh, we'll there's have probably a... a relationship lesson in there somewhere too. <laughs> We'll have a link in the show notes if you're interested in that. Uh, okay, on to our quick mentions for this week. Uh, some morons are DDoSing Ashron's call as it <laughs> ends. And Bill's laughing and I'm cursing, but really? Like, come on, morons. Why the it's... heck are you DDoSing Ashron's call? It is a pretty... Um... Idiot. I can't even like it's just it's like the height of social maladjustment. Oh, like, what's good? Like I, I, I've been watching South Park recently for this season, and and uh, kind of thinking about the troll culture as it's been represented in that. In that, have you been watching South Park at all this year? No. Anyway, it's you. You remember the World of Warcraft South Park episode, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Well, imagine guys like that time like and an entire society of people <laughs> like that except like that. also dicks well yeah so that's that's sort of how i imagine what's happening with this ddos like i can't i don't even know what you could possibly hope to gain from something like that i mean people are already disappointed that it's going away that the that the whole divorce between standing stone and turbine and warner brothers couldn't find a home for asheron's yeah. call or anything like that that's already a little bit sad there's so there was the story of the one grandpa who who's been playing asheron's yeah. call for quite a while and uh i think about that guy wanting to play asheron's call for one more weekend at the end and not being able to yeah just why like what what have you accomplished it's they're you, made dicks, an, Bill. You, you made an old man sad bravo yeah uh on that sad note uh something cool coming out of ship of heroes uh for those of you who are interested in that uh, you can check it out uh it is a uh video outlining the character creation 
Uh, now, of course, if you don't remember the last show when we talked about this, uh, Ship of Heroes is a spiritual successor to City of Heroes, uh, taking place, funny enough, on a ship in space with heroes. I know. Who would have guessed? Uh, the character creator uh, seems very cool, very detailed, uh, allowing for not just, uh, you know, picking from variations of pre-chosen, pre-designed body parts, but it's quite uh, quite some morphing abilities in it where you can change um, uh, eye size, eye height, eye depth, the downturn of the eye, the inner eye height, like uh, mm-hmm. you're, you're, you're changing the musculature underneath a little bit of the face and the body and stuff like that. So lots of details there if you're interested. And what was pretty cool when I was watching this video is that um, it looks like, and maybe I just wasn't watching carefully enough, but it looks like you get to create not just your hero, but also their secret identity, which I thought yeah, was that pretty was, cool. I thought that was kind of cool. And I don't know much about uh, the Unreal Engine and developing in it or anything like that, but the fact that you can act, that they were able to make characters that look this good in an actual game engine setting where with other uh, NPCs wandering around and that kind of thing uh, is promising like i was very skeptical of ship of heroes when it was first announced and i i love seeing little nuggets like this that kind of lend credence to the fact that it may very well be a real game that would be yeah. fantastic if it is yep yeah. uh it's it's pretty exciting so if you want to check that out we'll have a link in the show notes as well uh so we also have an email this week i will read it for us here Good evening. It is your awesome gnome, Frasley Sparkspan. You love gnomes. Contradiction in terms, but thank you anyway. What is one zone in any MMO that you just adore going to? Mine is Dunmorug in World of Warcraft. Music is here for emphasis, and I will put this uh, and play this in the background as we... uh as we discuss here this zone with its music its setting and the atmosphere just takes me back whenever i visit it i don't know with a gnome i have to read it in that voice you walk into iron forge and the contrast of the hot lava makes you feel warm on a cold wintry day you know i've been enjoying frasley in our discord quite a bit over the yeah. last couple of days but as soon as he put the words awesome and gnome together i was just lost <laughs> this was i was going tuned out all right uh so bill what about you what is your favorite zone to go to in uh in mmos in what game and what zone and unfortunately i'm going to make myself a bit of a hypocrite here because uh, i'm going to go after the one short race that i've actually been able to tolerate in any mmo (laughs) and i i love going back and and playing through metrica province in guild wars 2 anytime i running a, a new alt up or or actually even just doing anything. Uh, I, I do I enjoy going back and, and doing the, the events there. Uh, Metrica Province is just, it's just a cool zone. It's not a water heavy zone like some of the zones in Guild Wars 2. Uh, it's, uh, it's got neat story. I love the, the Azura cockiness. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that kind of uh, intellectual haughtiness. It, it's a, it's a fun ambience to to experience it adds a neat backstory to the zone and everything like that and actually as uh as you've been as as you go through the story of guild wars 2 it's a really critical zone like the events that actually happen in metrica province uh tie very it are very important to what's happening all throughout tyria during guild wars 2 the guild wars 2 timeline so mm-hmm. It's it's got a whole bunch of lore presence. It's got it's a fun zone. It's a it's it's a beautiful zone. Lots of trees, lots of forest. Um, that whole Azura bad scientist uh, technology kind of planted all over the place just sets a really nice tone. Yeah. In Guild Wars too. So I've I've I've, I've enjoyed that. Um, the other one, the one that really got the 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 nostalgia flowing for me though, was thinking about kind of that stretch. It's not just one zone, but it's a stretch of zones in Dark Age of Camelot, going from, uh, I believe it was, oh yeah, there it is, uh, Salisbury Plain, uh, where uh, Stonehenge is, over to uh, Camp Corentin 
Forest, over to Avalon March, and over to Cornwall. I spent so much time leveling my scout through there in Dark Age of Camelot as my first character going through. You and I did some leveling mm -hmm. in there. We did some group quests and dungeons in there and that kind of thing. It's just, uh, it was, it's, that's a, that's a real nostalgia zone for me. Sadly, I don't remember the music from those zones very well. Uh, but uh, I think we've got the, the the video that we've got in here. We'll have some of the music mm. from Salisbury Plain. So, yeah. But uh, yeah. So I was, yeah. That those are the ones that kind of jump over me. I was looking for World of Warcraft zones as well. Unfortunately, this is the one thing with cataclysm happening in world of warcraft some of the zones that i really liked and had a lot of nostalgia for actually wound up changing a lot in in world of warcraft so they kind of lost that nostalgia so i can't even really go back hmm. and do it again like uh oh i don't know what's a good example uh i mean uh certainly barons is a big one i mean everybody remembers the barons mm -hmm. um oh what's the like, yeah, I don't know. In, anyway, in, I'd have to in, I'd have to think about World of Warcraft. In uh Outlands, uh in Burning Crusade, uh is it Nagrand? Is that the one? The the very plains one? Yeah. Yeah, that I love that That's zone a too. nice one. Yeah. That's a good zone, actually. But that is not my favorite. In, in both Burning Crusade and Warlords of Draenor, I might add. Mm -hmm. Now this is not that's not my favorite, Thor. Are you ready for my favorite? Because I'm sorry, Bill, but I win. <laughs> I know it wasn't a competition, but I won it anyway. Uh, uh, you'll win in some ways, I guess. My my favorite zone is uh, none other than the Shire in Lotro because it is absolutely beautiful. And that's the one thing I was talking about earlier in the show, and that is that this game has aged fairly well, not so much in the animations and the textures, but in the landscapes that they have been able to create for this game. It is absolutely beautiful. It really is, and mm -hmm. um, it's uh, it, it. I've also always loved the soundtrack of it, right? Especially the Shire, that um, old English Celtic almost sort of yeah. music to it, right? Yeah, um, it, it's just fantastic. It, yeah, and as much as I mean, Hobbits, I don't know. It's it's hard to hate Hobbits and and, and lump them into my regular short race uh, racism. But uh, the Shire was put together so well in terms of representing what the Shire yeah. seemed like to me in the books. Yeah. Like they, they, they made that zone. It, it felt like in the context of every other zone in Lord of the Rings Online, it felt a little bit silly. Um, the politics in the Shire are wildly different than the politics that go on in any other zone. Yeah. Um, there's, there is a lot of interest in pies. There's a lot of interest in beer. Um, there's world ending concerns about pests eating crops. Yeah. Like this is, it, it just seems, it just did, they did a really good job of making it seem like this zone that's kind of insulated from the evil that's all around it and yeah. taking yeah. over the rest of the, of middle earth. Right. Uh, so I, I agree. I think that's that's an excellent zone for i mean i've said the word ambience a million times in this episode it feels like not to exaggerate or anything but uh uh yes i agree with you it's just and i've, I've for those of you watching the video i've i've paused it on this landscape this this panorama uh at the uh, north end northeastern end of the shire and it's just there's i i haven't had a game be able to recreate that panoramic aspect that that lotro gives me um, I don't know if it's just the draw distance of the landscape because the draw distance of actual stuff isn't that different. It's less than some mm -hmm. other games, but just yeah. looking over this, it's just like, I, I, I don't feel like there's that usual fog that MMOs built in, build in it's... or RPGs build in to limit your distance. Right. It feels like a big sky game. Yeah. Like, you know, like that, like, like yeah. it's, this just, the world feels a little bit more open. Like, again, we both, we, both of us have been playing World of Warcraft quite a bit. Uh, the 360 view you take from any spot in almost any spot in Lord of the Rings online is more grand than mm -hmm. any 360 view take view you take in World of Warcraft. Yeah. 
Absolutely. I don't want to say that Lord of the Rings looks better than World of Warcraft. I think that's a debate, and you could argue that. But certainly in terms of uh, grandiosity, mm-hmm. yep. Lotro is, is excellent. All right, uh, time for our last segment here. What are we playing next week in game? A reminder to our chat room, if you're in there and you want to let us know what you're going to be playing next week, we will be happy to mention it at the end of this segment. Bill, what are you going to be doing this week? Well, we've got uh, another hot date for Wednesday night to play World of Warcraft. Um, I'm going to keep working on getting used to my new throttle and Elite Dangerous and and start exploring there. Obviously, I'm going to have to get ready for uh, or get my ship all shinied up for my co-pilots and and crew members when that drops. Um, And I've also I, you know, I watched last night. uh, We had a little family movie night. Uh, where we watched the newest uh, DC Heroes Lego movie mm-hmm. that popped on Netflix. Yeah. And that just inspired me to play DC Universe online. Like I started mm-hmm. thinking about uh, mm-hmm. uh, like Grodd is one of the characters in, the, in that movie. And I thought about uh, all of my early zone experiences fighting Grodd, the giant ape. And I thought, oh, that could be fun. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think uh, I think I'm going to take a run at uh, DC Universe and see what it's like these days. Awesome! Uh, I'm going to play WoW. Uh, my family will get back into DDO, of course, WildStar as well, and as always, uh, Lotro because it's fun. And our chat room is Gumps Gang is saying next week Final Fantasy 14 DDO Lotro and being evil in Swotor. Swotor That's one evil. thing. I've never really done or I've never taken a serious run at in, in Star Wars is playing the dark side. Like I've, I've oh, created really? characters and I've done like a couple zones and that kind of thing. So I feel like there's a lot of story waiting for me there to do that. Yeah. But in my heart, I'm a, I'm a Jedi in Star Wars. Like I just I feel like if I want to play Star Wars, I want to be the good guy. I want to yeah. be Obi-Wan. And... I had a Sith for a while. I didn't enjoy it. Yeah, I didn't enjoy it. All right. uh, If people want to get a hold of us, Bill, how can they do that? Oh, there's a ton of different ways. You can head over to MMOReporter.com and check out our new site over there. Uh, You can send us an email to MMO.Reporter at gmail.com if you want to send us any questions, uh, just like uh, Frasley the Friendly Gnome sent us uh you can visit us over on facebook at facebook.com slash mmo reporter you can tweet at either of us either at mmo underscore reporter for chris or at mmo bill for yours truly you can give us a call at 616-666-6778 to leave us a voicemail if you want to be worldwide famous on the mmo reporter podcast that is the best way to start doing that uh you can check us out over on youtube at youtube.com slash mmo reporter network uh, for all of our YouTube videos and PAX stuff that we, we mentioned a little bit of PAX there today. But hopefully someday, maybe we'll get some PAX Unplugged coverage to put mm-hmm. on that channel. That'd that would be, cool. be good. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're looking for something to do on Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Pacific time, head over to gaming.youtube.com slash MGN slash live to watch uh, the MMO reporters uh, stumble horribly and awkwardly hmm. through dungeons that everybody else can do easily. We don't. We, we decided to take a different tack with our dungeons. We don't do dungeons well. We, we want to show the world what doing dungeons badly looks like. <laughs> So yep. tune in tune in at, on Wednesday at 8 to uh, see how that works. Uh, if you'd like to help us keep going, uh, head over to patreon.com slash MMO reporter to throw a little support our way. Or if you're not a Patreon kind of person, head over to MMO reporter.com slash support. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks, Bill. It's been a fun show. Yeah, I love excellent. Fun this week. I feel great. That's great. Uh, And thanks to our chat room for coming out, both on Twitch and on YouTube. It's always fun to have you out here. Uh, It's been a pleasure chatting with you, talking about games and all that fun stuff. We hope that you enjoyed the show, however you may consume it on uh, audio form, video form, however you may do that. We hope that you come back again next week to enjoy the show, but most importantly, we hope to see you in game. Don't don't, don't forget about your old you need to cherish each and every day. Thanks for watching the video everybody don't forget to check out all the other podcasts at mmoreporter.com or by clicking on any of the links here and please check out our patreon campaign at patreon.com slash mmoreporter thanks everyone and see you in game